Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Fiona Wood. I'm a software developer um, working on VivoQuant um, at Invicro. And it is my pleasure to introduce Rhonda Silva, who is an application specialist who does a lot of cool things with IPAX um, and VivoQuant at Invicro also. And she's going to be talking about automating workflows on the IPAX and a lot of really cool tools you can do to um, make things go really fast. So. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rhonda Silva. I'm an application specialist. Um, many of you have familiar voices because I speak on the phone with you, <laughs> um, so it's great to meet all of you in person. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you about leveraging the IPAX API and some other scripting tools to automate your image analysis workflows. A uh, quick overview of what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to go over what I consider to be a kind of standard image analysis workflow um, and some of the challenges that are presented when you execute those workflows manually. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the goals of an automated solution. Um, and some of the tools that you can use to actually execute that. And then I'll walk you through the example output of an automated workflow. As mentioned before, everyone has a diagram. This is mine, and it comes up quite frequently in this presentation. Um, so I broke up an image analysis workflow into these four major sections. So the first being image processing. You load in your data, um, you do whatever kind of pre-processing routine you need to, resampling, converting units, um, registration, motion corrections, things like that. And then once you have your pre-processed data, you want to segment the regions of interest um, and turn that into some kind of quantifiable information. So you want to aggregate that data um, and then analyze it using statistics and visual resources like plotting. Some challenges that come with executing that manually, um, the largest by far is just sheer amount of processing time. Um, the, the large amount of processing time takes away from other meaningful tasks like data interpretation and optimizing study parameters, for example. Um, the repetitive nature of image analysis workflows, honestly, can also get pretty boring. <laughs> um, and it's easy to make mistakes um, across, it's easy for an individual to make mistakes or across groups um, when you don't have that kind of consistency. Uh, this also opens up room for human error, for example, in your ROI segmentation, or um, in data manipulation in Excel, for example. I think we've all copy and pasted the wrong column before. <laughs> um, and scripts eliminate that error. Um, and for all of you who have done this before, and of course, multi-patient, multi-modality, dual isotope image acquisition that occurred across four time points is not fun <laughs> to pre-process when you are doing every single patient, every single time point, both modalities, um, all by hand. So an automated solution is really helpful, especially in this type of situation. So the goals of an automated solution. Um, there, it does require some time investment, um, but there is a purpose, and that is to batch process your data and just re reduce the amount of processing time. Even if you can cut it by 75%, that's 75% more time you can spend doing something else. Um, you can also simplify your workflow um, to use minimal and integrated applications that flow together seamlessly instead of having to do something in one application and then export to a CSV file there and then manipulate it somehow and import it somewhere else. You can have seamless integration in between the applications. Um, on occasion, some softwares do allow you to utilize capabilities that aren't necessarily accessible through the UI. Um, a big one that I really like a lot is that you can change analysis parameters without re-executing an entire workflow. So what I mean by that is you can say, I want to rerun all of this using um, a different unit or, a, you know, I screwed up my voxel size, so I want to change that. So you can just change the parameter and rerun a script instead of re-executing the entire thing. Um, and this will also reduce inter and intra observer variability because everyone would be consistently using the same formatted script. So some workflow automation tools. I'm going to cover three and then go through how you can actually incorporate these into a real workflow and how they work together. 
Um, VivoScript. VivoScript, many of you guys have heard of, um, especially yesterday, have seen some of this. Uh, it's a JavaScript-based language that was developed in-house by the VivoQuant team. And it allows you to access VivoQuant operators and their associated functions. So for example, you can do things in the 3D ROI tool, the registration operator, and the crop cropping and arithmetic operators uh, through scripts. Um, it also allows you to upload, filter, and retrieve data and ROIs to and from the IPACs very, very seamlessly. Um, the two function together very well. Next one is R. This is not in Invicro software, but I think it is useful in the industry in general um, and for data analysis. This is an open source statistical analysis software that I think is, it's likely that a lot of you are familiar with it. Um, it's, it's got honestly pretty user friendly syntax, user -friendly syntax in my opinion. Um, it's pretty human readable for those of you who've seen it and there's a lot of good docu documentation for it online. Um, it was designed for statistical computing. That is what it was created for. So it's it, there's a lot of packages um, and functions that come with it that are just make handling data very easy. Um, and it also provides graphing and data visualiz visualization capabilities, which is really nice. Uh, and lastly, the IPAX API, which for you non-developers means the IPAX application program interface. Uh, in layman's terms, that just means we have a set of tools that allows us to run the IPACs within other applications. Um, so for example, you can, you can request get and post requests. Um, so that just means you can get and post data um, from, from and to the IPACs within a different application. So for example, in R and in MATLAB, um, that's the type of application that you could do this in. Um, the API allows you to do some really useful things from inside of R and MATLAB and other third-party softwares, um, such as querying metadata, uh, accessing v VQ quantification data points, which are the data points that are associated with ROIs. Um, you can get directory lists from the WebDIS side of the, of the IPACs, which for those of you who have seen it, it, you know it can be very useful if you need to download specific files, for example. Um, you can upload and download to that directory, and you can also execute IPACs reports. So that's just some of the functionality that it has. Um, so now I'm just going to walk you through this automated workflow that um, I had developed with the help of some other uh, NVGRO developers, and just kind of walk you through what the output of these materials are. So. Going back to this diagram for a second, I'm just going to walk you through the stages in each step and show that these are all things that are possible through scripting. And if you just look at the bottom left corner of each slide, I have the tool that I used um, for each of these steps in case that's not clear. Um, so you just ran a study and now you have data that is, let's say for a case of example, is loaded onto the IPAX. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to load in your images and do some pre-processing, so resample your data and convert your units. Uh, you can see here at the top, that's just scripting um, that's, that's saying, go to this IPAX, filter the data based off these parameters, and then load it all in, and, and do that for each image. So there's actually an equivalent um, in VQ, in the actual UI, to doing that, and that's just, well, doing that for a single patient. So you can see there, I, I filtered off patient name that contained day zero. So I filtered off the time point, as well as the modality. I filtered off the pet, pet within the series description. So it's possible through the UI, but if you do it in VivoScript, you can batch do that. Um, and then I pre-processed it using a very simple single line function that we have. It's called the pre-process wrapper, and it's the equivalent of the pre-processing tool within VivoQuant. Um, so I just resampled and converted within, um, within that script. So super simple and easy to use. Uh, continuing on, the next step would be, or I most often see is motion correction or some kind of registration. You can execute automatic registration in VivoScript. So what I showed at the top is how you would do this exact same thing at the bottom through a VivoScript. Um, and you can see it's, it's really short. Um, only a few lines and it ex executes this automatic segmentation, or sorry, um, registration. So to recap, you have your data and you've pre-processed it, so now you actually want to obtain some kind of 
information from it, so you want to generate your ROIs. Uh, you can do this through, there's automated ways of doing this, and there's, of course, there's manual ways of doing this. Um, I personally like a semi-automatic approach to this, and VivoScript very easily allows for that by allowing the user to suspend a script and um, have the user provide either input or take some kind of action and then continue. So in this example, I have the user is prompted to, it says select, um, very small font, I think I wrote select seed point. <laughs> select seed point, so I just mean select the, the center of the ROI, and then once you hit OK, it will continue on, um, create the ROI for you, and then automatically threshold out the hard ROI. So it's good for um, user interference if they need to do some manual work within it. Um, but the script will walk you through it and help you out. Uh, lastly, I mentioned that very seamless IPAX integration um, within VivoScript. You can submit your ROIs. Um, you can submit your data, your ROIs, um, to the IPAX using, again, single line code, just repo.submit ROIs. So very, very easy and um, user friendly in that case. And when you submit your ROIs to the IPAX, you're also submitting the quantification data point, which is the quantification data that's associated with each ROI. Okay, so moving on to the next software. So now you have your process data, your segmentations, and it's all on the IPAX. So what do you do with it? In the, in, normally, um, I think a lot of people would think, well, I want to export that to a CSV somehow. And you can do that, of course, um, through IPAX reporting. But another option that I find really useful um, is directly importing it into R or MATLAB or whatever software you choose to use. Um, so in this example, what I'm showing is you can just define some parameters about the IPAX and about the project, as well as your authentication information, um, and you can submit the request to the IPAX to retrieve the data directly into R. So that's the, those are the commands on the top, and what you can see is the result is on the left, I have the VQ quantification data point. So that's just showing, if I, if I looked at an image and then I looked at the ROIs associated, the image on the left is what I would see on the IPAX. Um, if I run that command, the image on the right is what I see in R. So it's the exact same information. Um, you can pull the quantifi quantification information as well as the associated metadata. And so now that you have it in R, you, you really can do whatever kind of manipulation you want from there. That's, that's the hardest part, and it's very simple. <laughs> so... Um, you're going to grab all of, your, um, all of your quantification data points for all of your images, and then, of course, you're going to want to actually group that information, so you'll want to group it by your group name, your time point, and your ROI. So, and as I mentioned, because R is, is optimized for data analysis, grouping is very simple, and there are, there are single one-line functions that allow you to do this um, very easily. So I take those individual data points, and then I turn them into group-level information. Um, lastly, while you are manipulating all of this in R, it is useful to QC, of course, and that's a step that we all uh, need to take, and R allows you to export CSVs. Um, anything that you do from within R, you can export it um, to a local source. So I just have the group level information and the individual patient level information that get exported directly out to um, my local computer. Lastly, and um, one of the nicest part, parts, in my opinion, is because you have all of your group level information directly from the IPAX in R, you can just do your um, data visualization from there. So you can create plots. Um, this is just an example. You can do your, your bar plots, your group plots, your time activity curves, um, generate all of them within R, and set consistent parameters for the actual aesthetics of the plots. Um, and keep them consistent across all of your scripts, and then export that data as well, or export those plots as well into a, a single PDF, for example. And so once you have all of these on a local source, another utility of the IPAX is you can submit that those files to the IPAX. So now you have them on a local source, and then you have it in the project folder on the IPAX. So just to recap, because that's quite a lengthy workflow. 
Um, what I would do in this case for this type of workflow is use a VivoScript to pre-process data, segment ROIs, and submit them to the IPAX. Uh, I would follow that up by using the API within R um, to retrieve that data and then perform any data manipulation, statistical analysis, um, and data visualization within R. So, of course, there's a lot of variation um, in, in executing that type of automated solution, um, but there are a lot of useful resources out there so that you can make it happen for your own workflow. So, for example, we have VivoScript documentation. Um, we have an older set of documentation as well as a newer, that's current, a newer one that's currently being updated. Um, we also have IPAX API documentation, which I did, I did this workflow using that documentation and I found it to be very helpful. I had never used an API before. Um, and the R website is, is very useful as well, or whatever other third party software you use likely has helpful documentation. Um, and lastly, always feel free, if you're interested in this kind of thing or you wanna talk out where are the aspects of my workflow that I can automate, you can always email us um, at support at invico.com or you can just reach out to me directly. I love to help with this kind of stuff. <laughs> so. A little typo in there. Um, some quick acknowledgements for always answering my endless questions. <laughs> the development team, the VQ and IPAC team both helped me out with this um, and they provide me with information necessary to pass that along to customers. So definitely very, very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Yes. Oh, thank you. I know you have R script in Vivo. I'm a Unity scientist, but I don't know how to write R script. I use this or still manipulate the compute on the so I had very, very little R experience as well, and I'm not saying that I'm such a great developer. I'm just saying that I think it's pretty user-friendly and you can definitely figure it out, and I'd also be happy to help out with that. Um, I don't think you need to be an expert developer to work with R because the statistical packages that are included are so user-friendly. So I don't think it's, I think it's worth the time investment to kind of try to learn, and uh, there's a lot of Q&A online, <laughs> people asking very similar questions, and the helpful resources available. Um, I would not necessarily, so in this case, it's, I do that because I retrieve the data directly um, and it's just simple to output all of my materials at once. I don't have to do that. Um, I, I also do both. <laughs> it just depends really. If I, have, um, if I have a report on the IPAX that gives me exactly what I want, I'm just going to execute that. But if I manipulate it in some way um, that's not done on the IPAX, I'll do it through here. It does, yes. <laughs> um, R, R and MATLAB are the two that I've used. Um, I believe there are a few more, do you, if you happen to know any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just, if it can make the web request, it can, we can use it, would be my assumption. Anything else? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. <laughs>